Hello and welcome. My name is Clive from Clive'sArt.co.uk and in the studio today we're going to be producing a painting like this. Yes, this is in the style of Bob Ross. If that's something you're interested in, please stay with me and I invite you to join me in the studio after a short introduction. Nice. <laughs> Hey, welcome, thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. Visit Clive5R.co.uk Hello, and thank you for taking up my invitation to join me in the studio. As you have seen, we're going to be doing a little tribute painting to Mr. Bob Ross, who was um, an oil painting artist in the 80s. And without further ado, I'm not going to waffle. I'm going to cut the fluff. Yes, as they say, cut the fluff, Clive. And I'm going to be using um, a 24 by 20 double primed canvas. I primed it myself twice with some gesso and I'm going to be applying some blending white. Now this is very similar to what Mr. Ross used as far as his liquid white was concerned, but this is acrylic, it's not oil based. So do not use the Bob Ross paint uh, um, liquid white because it's not going to work. Oil and acrylic do not mix. I have specially formulated this myself to work on this type of painting. Now, I'm going to be applying a very thin coat of this to the canvas. And as I do that, I'm going to run across the um, colours and paints that I'm going to be using on this painting today, just down here. Now this um, blending white is actually available on my website. Please pop along to www.clives5art.co.uk and there you will see um, the all the uh, items that I've got for sale. So please, please, please um, go ahead and purchase some of that. And all I'm doing is applying a very thin coat of my blending white to my painting, to my canvas. And I'm going to apply that all over in a nice even coat. Now this will stay workable for up to about two hours depending on atmosphere and depending on heat. So um, when you order this, I will make a note obviously of where you live. So if, you, if you're living in, in the Americas, that type of thing, I will make sure that I've added a little bit more of my special ingredient to keep it a little bit more workable. But as I said, um, it's all dependent on atmosphere. But in the UK, I can get a roughly about two hours use out of it. So I'm just going to carry on and apply that all over my canvas. I shall get back to you shortly. Okay, as you can see, you should be able to see um, by the cameras that it's um, the board is really wet and that's the um, blending white that I've actually put on. Uh, it's very warm in the studio and um, you can work wet on wet with this quite easily for up to about two hours. Now, what I do recommend is if you um, also go along and purchase a very fine mist bottle um, and that's got a, um, a retarding angel in, in it as well and you can just slightly mist down your blending white and that's just going to keep it active um, with our formula as well so that's going to keep the paint wet so without further ado let's have a look if we can't put a little bit of sky in and um, I've got the uh, paints set out on my palette as you can see I'm just going to use the same brush that I used for the uh, blending white, just taking the excess off. I got a Rizzo and Crimson, Card Yellow, Naples Deep, Philo Blue, Goose Green, and Van Dyke Brown. A little bit of gesso. Um, I'm just gonna put these tickets by there, so you can see as the brushes I'm gonna be using, we'll be talking about them in a minute. I'm just gonna put them there so you can see uh, the colors as we go along, but these will be in the um, descriptions below. Um, press um, the little button that says show more and you will see all that information there. So what I thought I'd do today is I'm going to pick up a very small amount, very small amount of Arizona Crimson on the very tip of my brush like this. You don't want a lot of this, it's quite powerful and sometimes it may be better just to take a little bit off like that and I'm going to go um, just into the sky area like this and you can see it blends in with the 
the blending white and I want that little bit of a warmth a bit of a, a glow to the sky that's what we're looking for today yes nice bit of warmth into the sky and just blend that in little X's little X's blend that in like that now you should be able to see on some of the cameras how shiny this is and I have got actually a white spot on this particular camera so I wanted the, you to see that this is wet it certainly is just put a little bit more color into this sky now I'm gonna go straight over to the phyllo blue now the phyllo blue is a lot stronger um, than the erisarin crimson so I'm gonna put a little bit more blue on there you can use the same brush it's okay it's not a problem and I'm just gonna go and I'm just gonna blend that through all the way across the top of the canvas like that blending that in how that actually merges with the blue and bring that blue down and if it's if you want to put a little bit more blue on this make that sky a little bit darker there we can do that it's our world we can do what we want in our world yes we can and just blend that through like this You can see that the actual blending white is making these colours nice and pastely looking. And when this dries, it's going to be a lovely colour. I'm just picking up a little bit more phyllo blue. I'm just going to darken the top of that sky off a little bit more. And I'm just going to blend that down. Blend that down into the blue, into the red, sorry. Blend that down into the cadmium red. Get those colours to mix together. Because blue and cadmium, uh, blue and risen and crimson, sorry, blue and risen and crimson is going to make a nice violet colour, and that's what we're looking for. It's taking off, taking off the, there we are, you can see over there, take a, the paint off the brush like that, and then very, very lightly go across, very, very lightly go across like that, and blend all that in together. Starting at the top and working your way back down. Let's get a bit of colour in there like that. Missed that bit. Why did I miss that bit? I don't know. So, okay. Now what we're looking now to do is just get a little bit of that risen and crimson, a little bit of that red mixed together. Let's mix a bit of that together. Let's get a little bit of a purpley colour. There we go. And um, taking the excess off your brush like that. And then coming straight down. straight down like that a bit more blue just make it a bit dark over there oh 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 don't worry too much about that don't worry about this a little bit dark spot here a little dark spot there it doesn't matter it doesn't matter Just bring that down like that. Let's put a little bit more blue just there. Let's just darken this area up a little bit by there. And with your brush, again, let's go straight across like that. How easy is that? That's water. That's water. Get your little brush. You can put a little couple of little lines through like that. Just on the edge like that. And then very lightly. One hand and away. Very lightly brush that through. Like that. Now take a little bit of time. You've got more time than I have. I'm trying to do this as quick as Mr. Bob Ross done it, but I don't know if I'm going to be successful, but we'll certainly have a try. Now, what he used to do was use a midnight black, um, which is a very dark color. Now, 
midnight black basically is a blue black so let's put a bit of mars black there because that's got ultramarine blue and let's get a bit of phyllo blue across and let's just mix a bit of that together and let's take that over to our canvas and let's go pushing it right on like that push it right on like that oh, what's that i don't know a bit of paper come off my palette doesn't matter doesn't matter let's get let's get that down there now this is not as thick obviously because of the blending weight but we're going to get the same type of effects that we were looking for pick up a bit more paint Don't forget we're using acrylics, not oils. This is why it's like it is, because we're using acrylics and not oils. I've got to say that because acrylics is a totally different animal. Right, let's put our thing there. Let's pick up, um, I'm picking up a short flat. Um, this is a three quarter inch. What I want to do now is exactly what Mr. Ross did. I want to pull out this paint like that. Blend it in. Keep it a nice sharp edge all the way along there. Sharp as we can. Blend that in. You can develop your your mountain on the palette, on the canvas, on the pellet. <laughs> and just keep working, working this paint. Like that leave that little bit look there's a little bit of white there so let's bring that let's bring that mountain down like that let's leave that little bit of mountain white in the background don't worry about that because there's a bit of snow on that peak bring that there like that let's bring this one in front of that one there. just pull in some brush patterns like that. Bring that down. Work on these mountains. Get these mountains. This is this is your this is your world, and you need to get these paintings and mountains the way you want them. Leave that in the background. I like that. I like that. I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to like that. I do like that. Bring spring that like that. Okay, let's wash my brush very quickly. Taking off the excess onto my roll. And I'm just going to pull down ever so lightly. Not that you'll see much of this, you won't, but that's just for me. And then lightly, 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 lightly pull that in. So if you wanted to make some um, shadow or reflections, then you can. And what I suggest you do at this stage is getting Mr. Bottle um, and just very, very lightly, just a couple of little squirts just on the water, just below there, um, just to keep that workable. And what I'm going to try and do now is um, I'm going to get uh, another brush. Let's get my little filbert brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of white in this case. And I'm just going to go very lightly. Just with the edge of the brush. Just 
You can use a palette knife if, if you feel comfortable to, to use a palette knife. You could use a palette knife for this. I will do that in a second. But I just like using the brush. And don't forget, we can play this later on if we wanted to. We could, we could change this about. Um, especially if once it starts to go a bit dry, we could change this about. whole different animal uh, acrylics and oils but if we can work these together then we can get the same type of effects then we will just pulling it down like that thinking a little bit where possibly these dark areas are going to be we can blend that in with our brush like that we can go back on after and put a little bit of a stronger highlight on but for the moment let's just develop some of these mid-tone areas that's what I'm looking to do a little bit of a different technique to Mr Ross but as I said we're using acrylics so we need to adapt the way we do things we, we can't copy um, exactly what he's doing um, because acrylics and oils work with differently but they're very similar so which is a bit of a contradiction in terms I know but it's true so as we develop these mountains and let's see if I can't use a little bit of a palette knife let's see if um, if that does help so I got I can get a little bit of paint um, onto my edge of my palette brush uh, knife <laughs> palette brush, palette brush. <laughs> let's see if we can't you, you've seen me thicken um, this up before and you can do that if you wanted to uh, you can use a little bit of um, heavy structure gel or something like that to get the effect because acrylic is a lot um, less thick I should say because it's a little bit thinner it's a little bit more difficult to control with a palette knife unless you actually thicken it up. Now you can thicken it up and, and you've seen me do that on the rocks and the mountains. But in this particular case, most of us are happy using a brush and I'm just going to carry on using a brush um, for this because I think that's important because if you want to replicate this, I don't want you to have to worry about going out buying palette knives and, and things. I want you to be able to just pick up a brush and if you watch how I'm doing this then you'll see that the different techniques that I'm using so I'm, I'm not I'm not painting like that I'm actually dragging the brush across the areas like that and I'm looking for these little patterns I've told you these little patterns sometimes are, are there they, they, they will show themselves to you you've just got to look for them yeah take a little bit of paint off my my brush and I'm just going to drag that through like that Okay, I'm going to purposely now allow that to dry off. I want that to dry um, a little bit. Now, this is where this is where the blending white uh, can come into its own because it's going to dry and it's going to dry within within 60 minutes um, to, to two hours. So it all depends on the atmosphere, as I've said. So if you want to allow it to dry and then come in and do final detail work, then you can. So we can we can certainly do that. And, and then that, that way then we can uh, play around with a little bit more detail on these mountains etc. So I'm just going to wash that brush. I'm going to get my, um, my half inch brush again, my three quarter inch brush again. And I'm going to mix a little bit more Mars Black, a little bit of that Filo Blue together. A bit more Filo Blue. And get that nice dark color again and this case now I'm going to be using a paintbrush and I'm going to be bringing another mountain in front of that one 
come down like that now you can I want to show you a couple of techniques and you can see the paint is coming through now I'm doing this one exactly the same way as I done the ones behind and that can come down like that and I'm going to take any excess off my brush and I'm just going to dry brush that in like that This mountain is going to be a little bit more in shadow. So I want to get a little bit of a Rizzer and Crimson. And I'm going to bring a little bit of that Rizzer and Crimson into that mountain. Like that. Just give it a little bit of warmth. I want I want that I want that to pick up. I want to pick up a little bit of warmth there. So I'm going to let that again. I'm going to allow that to dry. I'm just going to wash my brush. And at that point, I am actually going to allow this to dry. Um, this is going to take about two hours, so please bear with me. And um, we'll see if we can't work on this area now. And I'll show you another way of actually using the blending weight. Okay, so I've come back and it's been around about 90 minutes um, to three quarters an hour. 90 minutes to three quarters, 90 minutes to two hours. And... Um, yeah, I'm quite happy with that and um, I'm just going to very quickly, because you can do this, you can, just to make sure it's dry, you can run your hair dryer just over the surface of the canvas, just to make sure there's no wet bits. And now we've actually come back to a canvas where we would know as a conventional type of painting without the blending white. So. Um, the blending white gives you the opportunity to put some skies in place and some mountains and you can get that blending, instant blending and water, it's absolutely fantastic for water. So what I thought I'd do is I, I got my old faithful here, I've got this little short flat, I don't know how it started but it looks more like a filbert. I'm going to pick up a little bit of titanium white onto my brush and I'm just going to scrub in some little clouds some wispy wispy bits here and there don't worry too much don't think too much about the actual shape itself as such just just get a little bit of just get a little bit of cloud in there like that and just just blend it through very 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 simple cloud dragging it down like that let's put a little bit of wispy bits here and there and blend that in Pick up a little bit of your rizzer and crimson, and it touched not, not too much, not too much, or you'll kill everything. Just a little bit of, a little bit of warmth to these clouds. Just put a little bit of that, a rizzer and crimson, just into the cloud again, like that. And if you've done it a little bit too much, get a little bit of kitchen roll, and then just blend that in with a little bit of moisture or a little bit of blending white. You could get a little bit of blending white. There's a little bit on my lid. You can pick up a little bit of blending white just on the tip of your brush like that. This is what it's useful for. And you can blend that in. And you can, that's why I call it a blending white rather than a liquid white is because you can blend with it. So you can get these lovely pastel colors. Washing the brush very quickly. And let's just blend that out. A little bit more blending white, it's just Blend that out. A bit of moisture. You can see that's quite liquid now. You can do it that way as well, and you can get a brush, and you can. I'm just showing you different ways of using this actual product. Um, as I said, it's available on my website, so please pop along and order some. I know there's a lot of it has been ordered, and. Um, Sorry, I'm just concentrating on these clouds then. I tend to get a little bit lost sometimes. 
So there's, there's been a lot ordered and um, I've actually made a new batch of the stuff now. So this, uh, well, I've had a new batch delivered. So, and that's got a little bit more of the retarding agent in it. Now the retarding agent um, can also be um, purchased as well. Um, they come in 100 ml bottles. I'm just putting a couple of little wispy, little wispy bits here and there. You don't have to do this. You can do as little or as much in the sky as you want. I'm just trying to show you different, different ways of using this particular medium straight into some basic flat undiluted titanium white again just bringing in a little bit of cloud smoothing that in now I have got a, a tutorial on clouds if you want to pop along I'll uh, put the, the descriptions in the i cards for you there should be one dropping down now and um, uh, or you can go into the show more button which is underneath a little couple of wispy bits here and there like that. Just, just make the sky interesting. And again, pick a little bit of that resin crimson up, and just put a little bit of warmth, a little bit more, put a little bit more warmth into this sky. It's a lovely colour, the resin crimson. I like it a lot. Um, what we're going to do now? We're going to work on the actual mountains themselves for a moment. I'm just going to put that brush into some water. Um, I'm picking up um, a little, little tiny um, short flat like that. I'm just going to put a lid back on my blending white because I don't want it to get contaminated. Again, I'm picking up some titanium white. And I'm going to go back to the actual canvas. Now, I'm going to drag, drag down. And don't forget, my paint has been on my palette now for over two hours and it's still not dry. And that's because I'm using a wet palette, and that is important in acrylics. Dragging, dragging, just picking up the the tooth off the canvas there. Picking up the tooth, you can see I'm just very, very light. I'm hardly touching this canvas. I'm just picking up that tooth. I just want to get that. Stroke, it's very stroking it very lightly. I said shadow there. Making little dents and dips and dops and just you've got to really think about mountains when you're doing this. And um, I haven't got mountains like this where I live. This is just these are these are things that I've learned uh, again, as I've said, of of uh, Bob Ross and William Alexander and and. Um, and people like that that I've been watching and you know I, 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 I've I studied a little bit um, looking at mountains and one thing or another see how they work and this is what you've got to do um, to, to get some sort of a, a realism to your painting um, I'm, I'm not a realist painter as such I'm more of a representational artist and that's all I'm trying to do is put a representation of what a mountain is together Again, very lightly dragging through with the paint. Picking up a bit more paint. I'm going down this edge now. Working on this edge. Now, I'm actually going to be doing a masterclass on uh, 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 next year. In 2016, I'm actually producing masterclass videos. Um, all the information will be on Learn to Paint with Clive and on this site if you want to and on my website as well which is www.clouds5art.co.uk um, if you're interested in coming along and seeing what I've got to offer as far as master classes are concerned then there will be a series of videos um, done uh, for you and, um, and also um, I'm going to be producing um, some videos specifically for my patrons which is a public funded site I, I, I would invite you to go along and see what perks are there. Um, the, the patrons uh, actually help me um, by funding my, my work and helping me make videos in this way because these are expensive and that is not a plug in any way. All I'm saying is that I've got no sponsorship and it takes a lot of time to do these videos and to help people that can't afford to paint or 
can't afford basically to go out and have lessons um, my goal is to actually help as many people as I can and I have been doing that because I've had so many fantastic comments from my art family over the months and years um, I've been doing this and it just makes me want to do it even more um, so if you can support me uh, in that way that would be grateful if I if you can't don't worry all I ask you to do is give me a thumbs up on my videos um, a, a comment like subscribe share all that type of thing is going to help me and if if you if you give me a thumbs up every time you see a video um, or you just want to share that video then please 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 do that because if nothing else that on its own is going to be enough to, to allow me to continue with these free lessons and for yourselves um, and, and, and that's all I ask so anyway enough of that so let's get back on to the painting so as you can see um, I'm just increasing little bits of detail there in the mountains themselves and you can see they they starting to have a little bit of depth there now so I don't want this one to be as bright as that so what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix a little bit of white I'm gonna bit of that the phyllo blue and that little bit of that black color I'm gonna mix try and mix a nice shadow color I'm gonna bring a little bit of where's he going loser and crimson into it I like a nice, nice purple blue colour. I'm going to have to get some more white in a minute. And I'm just going to bring a little bit of a, like a, a blue type of... Same type of thing. Just scag it down. Like that. Just put a couple of little areas here and there and there and here. We don't want this as bright. But we don't want it too dark and there's still going to be snow there on these and then I'm just going to put a little bit more titanium white onto my palette I think I need more <laughs> I think I need to buy some more titanium white yes just about come to the end of it so let's just put a little bit of snow on this edge there like that and just pull that down over that blue colour we've just put in there like that bringing that across a little bit more white and let's just pick up a couple of little bit of ridges here and there where that snow has fallen because it doesn't matter we don't want it as bright skag it in be loose enjoy it just you can't make you, that's one thing I did learn um, from Mr Ross was that you can't really make a, 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 an accident you can't have an accident really you, could, you can't make mistakes you can you can certainly put things where you don't want them to be but on the other hand you can always maneuver them about and you've got a little bit more forgiveness with acrylics than you have got with oils um, that's for sure there you go just a little bit of let's just put a little bit more of a, a bit of a cap there more than anything just, just to pick up a couple of little highlights. Yeah, there we go. What we can do with that now is we can get the air dryer on. Hey, welcome, thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And this is something you can do um, if you're using oils. Watch my brush. The first time I don't know if you've noticed, but it's the first time I'm actually starting to use a little bit of water or a bit of flow improver. Now that is the flow improver that I've got. Uh, again, that is available on the website. Um, I've got to promote these products in this particular video for the simple reason is that um, these all work um, with each other. So 
I know there's not going to be any problems between the blending white and the flow improvers and the retarders that I've actually mixed because um, they're all designed to work together. Now I mix a little bit of water, I made a wash, and I'm just going to go over that mountain like that. And this is something you couldn't do in oils. And I'm just going to kill back those mountains in the background going over the sky a little bit a little bit more a little bit more titanium white i'm using a titanium white rather than a zinc white because it's a little bit more opaque and i want that to work to my benefit just a little bit of contamination then contamination and jubilations okay so Let's get a little bit of titanium white now on the edge of my brush and pushing down like that on, onto the little brush. And I'm using a, a, an inch uh, brush, which is a, a synthetic brush. And I'm just going to bring in a little bit of a, a cloud coming across the peak of that mountain. Using the end of my brush, just. It doesn't matter what it looks like, it doesn't. There you go. Bring a couple of stringy bits across that mountain there like that. Then let's just, there's a, uh, da, 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 da. I just pick up a little tiny brush. I don't know what it is. It's, it, looks, it looks tiny, Phil, but I'm going to just play that like that. There you go. Just to take off those rough edges. And that, that'll, do, that'll do me as well. So it looks as if we've got a couple of clouds coming across that mountain now. And that'll die back. That will certainly die back. A couple of stringy clouds. I don't know why they're stringy. But they just are. This is your world. They can be anything they want. As long as it works, it works. And that's the most important thing. Now I'm going to get some titanium white. And I'm just going to pull down like this. across there like that. And I'm, I'm doing circular motions, not circular motions, but I'm, I'm dragging up like that, look. See how I'm doing that? I'm just dragging up like that. And I'm dragging in, trying to blend that together. Let's get a little bit of. Let's get a little bit of. Um, let's get a little bit of. Let's get a little bit of mist coming in here, shall we? I tell you what, we'll have to wait for that to dry before we can do that. And this is a mixture between um, acrylic painting, and it's a mixture between. Um, oil paint painting techniques and so you've got the blending white you've, you've got a lovely colour in the water already and you haven't worked hard on that so let, let's just put a little bit of a little bit of mist in there like that just knock those colours back a little bit make it look as if there's a little bit of mist going on there And now I'm using the same brush, I'm going back into my Mars Black, I'm going to bit a bit of Prussian Blue. Hey welcome, thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. Visit Clive5R.co.uk